Banthropic computer use demo allows you to interact with Claude, an AI model, by simulating tasks on a desktop environment. This demo is still in beta, so it's essential to understand that some features may have limitations or be subject to change. This tutorial is going to be for complete beginners that want to get started but have no experience dealing with any of the prerequisites that you need to get started. Firstly, make sure you've installed Docker. Docker is an essential piece of software for this to run. You can see right here, all you'll need to do is to click download Docker desktop. When you download Docker desktop, there are actually five different options. I'm going to explain what you need to do based on your current operating system. The first one, download for Mac Intel chip, is the option for users who have a Mac computer with an Intel processor. Older Macs and some models still use Intel chips. And you should choose this option if your Mac is one of them. Download for Mac Apple Silicone. This option is for newer Macs that have Apple Silicon chips, like the M1 or M2 chips. These are Apple's own processors, and you should select this option if your Mac uses one of these chips. Then we have Windows. Downloads for Windows AMD 64, and this is for Windows computers with 64-bit processors. This basically means that this architecture supports both AMD and Intel processors that run a 64-bit version of Windows. This is the one that most people on Windows will download, and it's the one that I've downloaded. Now you've got download ARM64, which is essentially for computers that use ARM64 processors, which are different from traditional Intel slash AMD processors, and the ARM processors are commonly found in tablets, some laptops, and mobile devices. If your Windows device uses an ARM chip, select this option. Then we have download for Linux. And this option is for users running Linux as their operating system, which is different from Mac, OS, or Windows. If you're on Linux, this is what you click. Next, you'll need to head on over to this link. This is console.anthropic.com, and I'll leave a link in the description so you can find this. Essentially, what you'll need to do is you'll need to get an API key from Anthropic. So first, sign in on this link with your standard Anthropic details that you use to sign in with Claude. Then you should be prompted with this screen. Now, once you're on this screen, we can then get our API keys. So you just want to click this button right here. Then what you want to do is you want to create your key. So we go here and we click create key. Now you can see we can name our key. For this, I would advise you putting computer use because that is essentially what we are using it for. Then for the workspace, just click default and then click add. Once you've done this, you'll then get a new API key. Now with your API key, make sure that you keep a record of the key because you won't be able to view it again. What you'll need to do is click the copy key button. Then we're going to open up notepad and then I'm going to paste the API key in. Now, you make sure that you save it in this document because there's nowhere else that you can view this key again. Now, I'm sharing my key in this video just for tutorial purposes. This key will be deleted by the time the video goes live. But if you're someone that has an API key, please make sure that you don't share it publicly or with anyone at all. So now once we have our API key here, let's just double check that Docker is working before we start to run everything. Go over to your Windows bar or whatever taskbar you have and then enter command prompt. You can see this pops up right here and I'm just going to click this and now we can see this right here. Once you've got this on your screen, we're just going to enter one small command that you just need to put in in order to make sure that Docker is running correctly. All you'll need to do is just paste what I've pasted in the description to check that your docket is working correctly. Once you paste this in, automatically there should be this message underneath that shows you the docker version and the build. If that isn't the case, put in whatever error message you get into ChatGPT and diagnose until your docker is working. Now that we have this, we can now move on to the next step. Next, you're going to want to set your API key. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to input my API key prompt, the first part of that. So what we will do is we'll put set anthropic API key, then equals, and then this is where we paste our API key. So for example, since I've just got my API key here, I would paste this in and then I click enter. And now that is my API key. If you want to verify which API key you're using, just input this prompt and it will show you which API key they've currently set. You can see right now the same value was presented. So I now know my API key was correctly entered in the first instance. Now that that is all done, the hard part is over. All we'll need to do is enter the actual prompt to get this running. This is where you'll input this. So come to this link and just copy this part. Just click copy. 
then come over to the system prompt and then put this in. So for example, here we'll just click enter and this will work and you'll see that the files should now start. Now I've done this and it will take a few minutes, but as the files are starting, you can simply wait. Once the files have been downloaded, you're just going to need to click the link they've provided and then you'll get to the Windows tab. Once you've opened this up in the browser, this is where you can now use the computer use agent. Now the agent is in an area that is completely contained, meaning that it's a virtual workspace and not your own. So now once you enter any kind of prompt into the prompt bar, you'll see that it says running agent. This means that Anthropic is successfully running the agent and providing it with screenshots of the environment that is virtual. So you'll have to understand that the environment is completely virtual. You can see here in this recent example, I asked it to go to Google and it simply sends screenshots and using those screenshots, it positions the mouse, performs a click and then moves to the next step. This is the entirety of how the program works. You can see that you're going to be also able to see exactly what's going on on your screen with a left hand side view of the chat bar. It's going to show you every single screenshot that occurs and where the steps are being placed. Now, if you do face any kind of errors or any kind of rate limits, what I would suggest you do is ensure that you're on the Claude paid plan. Oftentimes, if you're trying to use this on the free plan, you might run out of trial credits very, very quickly. Now, sometimes this computer use demo can glitch and can perform instances where it gets trapped in an agentic loop or might perform the incorrect click. What I would do is I would stop running this and just rerun this and try again. Now, it's also important to understand that this is early and in beta, which means that sometimes things might not work as intended. So it's important to understand that you need to ensure not everything that you try will work. One of the things that Anthropic says to do in order to get the best performance out of the model is to ensure that you prompt Claude and then provide it with this prompt structure right here that says after each step, take a screenshot and carefully evaluate if you have achieved the right outcome. Especially show your thinking, I have evaluated step X, if not correct, try again. Only when you confirm a step was executed correctly, should you move on to the next one. Now this is what they're saying to get the best quality outputs, but it does work with simple prompts anyways. And it also does say like some UI elements like drop downs and scroll bars might be tricky for Claude to manipulate using movements. So if you experience these issues where the model cannot navigate the web page, try to tell the model to use keyboard shortcuts. If you're finding that the agent has any trouble in this virtual environment, if you click the top right area, you can toggle screen control on, you can connect to the virtual workspace and then you can close anything that might be making it hard for the agent. Of course, that somewhat defeats the purpose, but it's important to ensure that your AI agent having the tool use is working correctly. Remember, this is a complete virtual environment and sometimes certain things on the web page can interfere with exactly what's going on. And once you've done that, you can then once again toggle the screen control and give control back to Claude. You can see that in this example, what I've just done is asked it to go onto YouTube and find my most recent upload. Previously, in many trials and errors, the current agent was struggling because it couldn't get past this cookies page. But when I went onto YouTube, I asked it to find my recent upload. You can see that it managed to take a couple of screenshots, then managed to scroll down and find the latest upload. You can see that it gives me the information right here, shows me how much views it's got, and gives me a lot of information. You can start to see that once you're able to do this with certain AI agents, you're able to easily manage to automate many different systems and processes for you or your business. Hopefully this tutorial helped you get started. And if there's any questions you have, I'll respond to all of them in the comment section below.